Uh, thank you very much, Professor Peck. Uh, it was really a nice introduction to me. <laughs> well, the topic I have today is uh, like this, comparison of Nusa and South Korea, especially with this hydrological cycles. In fact, the focus is more on the uh, water balance in both countries. Uh, you will see there were quite a dramatic change uh, between the two. Okay, the contents of this presentation includes uh, background and finally the conclusions. Okay, yeah, I think most of you know who they are. Uh, they are uh, present in South Korea. <laughs> and they are rulers in North Korea. Okay. <laughs> he ruled North Korea for more than 30 years and he died out of this uh, time period. And his son, Kim Jong-il, also ruled North Korea for about 20 years. Now his son, Jong-un Kim, has ruled North Korea. He was quite dramatic, like Donald Trump in the US. <laughs> and uh, in fact, we usually compare the, uh, the Kim Il-sung and uh, President Park. And uh, he was quite uh, much contributed to the uh, economic development in South Korea, but finally he failed at the end of his ruling period. And in fact, he prepared another dramatic uh, economic development plan uh, for 1990s, but unfortunately they failed and they could not increase the, uh, the per capita GDP. And as you can see in this figure, it's until 1980s, the GDP per capita was a bit large in North Korea. So their uh, living standard was a bit higher than uh, that in South Korea. Okay. But after the 1980s, so South Korea uh, has been quite successful in developing their economies, but uh, some kind of uh, economic collapse has been in North Korea. So uh, they could not increase their the GDP per capita, uh, so it's a bit decreased recently. So now the, uh, the GDP in South Korea uh, reaches around uh, $30,000, but they still remain in this stage. And this kind of difference in economy has arised lots of other problems. So one is the shortage of the fuels, especially in North Korea. So this kind of problem has increased the demand of timbers, uh, mostly in the uh, some uh, small mountain areas or mounds. So uh, some report says that the, uh, the forest area in North Korea has been decreased regionally, uh, maybe at, at least 10% to maximum 35% since uh, 1990s. So this kind of changes in land cover and vegetation has uh, introduced a quite large difference in hydrology in both countries. Uh, this picture shows how the land cover changes in North Korea okay, as since 1980s and 1920s. So, so you can distinguish this figure in this picture. Okay. And uh, this uh, the graph shows how much the forest area has been decreased uh, since 1980s. So the maximum 30% is on average. And the right-hand side, the picture shows that the, uh, the South Korea has been so successful to increase uh, the, the forest area. Uh, from originally, we have this kind of the shape, but now we have this kind of shapes. So uh, from, from the time point around the 1980s or 1990s, uh, the both countries, and, uh, South and North, uh, follow totally different paths, especially in hydrology and water diseases. So definitely as a result of that, though we can notice some kind of dramatic uh, drought event in North Korea. So these are some examples about the drought event occurred in North Korea uh, uh, around 1990 and 2000. And they mentioned that the written period of the drought in this year uh, 2001 uh, was about the several hundred years, and in this case was more extreme. They say that is the drought with a return period more than 1,000 years. But you know that the Korean Peninsula is not that huge, 
So though we assume that climate in South Korea and North Korea is more or less the same. So, but uh, during this period, we had, but we say that the return period of those drought uh, were less than 30 years or something. It was serious, but not that serious in North Korea. So we assume that this kind of huge uh, drought event uh, is partly okay, due to the, uh, that kind of deforestation in North Korea, uh, and mainly because of the economic failure. Okay. Now let me summarize the uh, objective of this study. So we want to compare what has happened in South Korea and North Korea. Uh, but the, you know that the, the data, hydrologic data in North Korea is not available, or is not available. Uh, some precipitation and temperature data are available, but that is the maximum. No observation data about the runoff or soil moisture is not avail available at all. So we need another tool to compare the situation in South Korea and North Korea. So we decide to use uh, the VIC model. So I will explain what this model is. And to consider the, uh, the change of land cover in North Korea, we use uh, different land cover data. Uh, for every 10 years. And uh, we used the, uh, the loan of data observed in South Korea uh, for the validation of the uh, modeling study. Also, we compared the soil moisture data over entire Korean peninsula. Uh, that soil moisture data is uh, the, uh, collected by the satellite. So we are going to compare that. And finally, after the validation of this simulation, we are going to compare the situation in South Korea and North Korea. Okay, this, uh, this slide summarizes the, what the VIC model is. As, uh, this is a large-scale land surface model developed by the University of Washington. And uh, they still use it. Okay? And it considers some water balance and energy balance and some kind of interaction between the soil and vegetation and atmosphere. And the VIC model has two different parameter sets. One is related with the soil. Uh, another one is the vegetation. So with some information about the soil and vegetation cover or land cover, then we can kind of automatically uh, decide the parameters. So in the parameter estimation, we do not use any kind of trial, or trial and error or any kind of optimization techniques. So it's kind of a straightforward procedure to decide the parameter estimation of the VIS model. And uh, the VIC represent variable infiltration capacity. So it's kind of technique to improve the quality of runoff simulation. Okay. And uh, we set the simulation using this kind of conditions. The resolution, the special resolution we adopted is 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 degree. So we have 92 cells within the Korean Peninsula, so it's kind of rough simulation. And uh, the simulation time step uh, was set to daily. So we did the simulation during this period from 1983 to 2013, so more than 30 years. Uh, and we divide uh, this uh, simulation period into three terms, the first term and second term and third term. I in fact, this a uh, division was introduced to consider land cover change. So for this period, we use one land cover information, and for this period, another one, and for this period, another information of land cover. Okay, let me uh, explain something about the, uh, some data used for parent estimation. Uh, well, it's not that complicated, and we used two different soil related data, one is the soil classification and another one is the soil depth. So this two information is really important for determining the parameter and ultimately determine the soil moisture condition, etc. So the information was provided by FAO and that information was uh, collected, made in 1995. And we assume that this soil condition remains unchanged uh, during the simulation period. And this is one result of the parameter estimation about the soil-related parameters. And as you can see in this table, the, uh, there's no obvious change between those and south. So soil characteristics, 
uh, can be assumed uh, more or less the same in north and south. And this is the land use data we used for or estimating the parameters related with the vegetation, etc. And the first one is the data uh, released uh, made in 1983. So this uh, land cover data is used for the first time. And the second one, the University of Maryland, and uh, this uh, was made in 1995. So we use it for the second term, and another one for the third term. Uh, Originally, we wanted to collect the land of data made uh, from the same institute, but unfortunately, uh, those data were not available. So we use uh, the land of data made by different institute. Uh, but hope, but yeah, quite fortunately, the effect of uh, the different institute uh, was not uh, serious. I think you can see the result uh, during the validation study. But as we have a different land cover data, the uh, uh, vegetation-related parameters were a bit different from South Korea and North Korea. Also, the, the parameters estimated, of, even for the uh, South Korea, the parameters were a bit different uh, depending on the uh, land cover information used. Okay. So uh, this kind of changes were considered in the simulation, definitely. But there were well, some uh, differences could be found, especially in these parameters. But overall, uh, the parameters seem not so hugely different from each other. But anyway, we could find some difference. And for the simulation, we need uh, some meteorological data. One is the precipitation, and another one is the temperature, minimum and maximum. Also, uh, this model requires wind speed. So we collect this information uh, from WMO, and uh, the information is uh, available at these uh, gauging stations. So not that many, not that many gauging stations were not used in this simulation. So it is possible to have no information for some cells in the simulation. In, in those cases, we some extrapolated, okay? So using the information about available at this point. Okay, let's talk about some validation, okay? So uh, in fact, two different validation procedures were uh, with the observed runoff data, that's for the uh, some South Korean part, uh, using the some runoff data observed at the uh, Soyanggang Basin and uh, Chungju Dam Basin. Okay, another one is as I said, uh, uh, with the soil moisture data observed by the satellite, and to check the validity of the land use data, so we uh, compare the runoff data for these uh, three period. It's a time period to represent each one is land, land, land use data. Okay. So as you can say, as you can see, the observed run of data and the simulated run of data matches quite well. It's, it's not a perfect, but uh, we can say the simulation result is maybe acceptable. And the correlation coefficient estimated is around a 0.8, so it's not that bad. Especially the result is not that bad because the, uh, the parameters were never been optimized. Okay. And this is one result uh, based on the comparison of soil moisture and where we use the uh, satellite observed soil moisture data provided by ESACCI. And the first we uh, drew the, uh, the box plot uh, this is the, uh, the photo satellite data, and this is for the simulation data. Well, the mean may be more or less the same, the, but the variability is a bit different, especially in the simula uh, simulated data, where the variability of soil moisture is rather high, and the, some extreme values uh, more uh, found in the observation data. Uh, but uh, you have to understand the difference between the two. The soil moisture data in the simulation uh, represent the soil moisture uh, 
for at least one meter soil depth. But in the satellite date, the soil moisture represents the maximum five centimeter or 10 centimeter topsoil part. So obviously, uh, there can be some different. Also, the soil moisture data uh, based on the uh, satellite observation uh, cannot consider the uh, vegetation effect. So especially during the summer time, when the vegetation is very uh, dense, then the soil moisture data can have lots of errors. So that is the limitation of soil moisture. But still, we have quite similar uh, soil moisture values. And this is the comparison of monthly mean. The top panel represented, represented the, uh, some simulated part and the bottom panel for the observation part. Uh, as I said, so we have large variation in the uh, uh, simulated soil moisture field, but more or less no variations in the uh, some observed part. Okay, especially during summer, the difference is really obvious. Okay, but anyway, so based on this kind of observation, especially in the comparison of parks plot, so the uh, simulation result uh, is assumed well reasonable. And as an another. Uh, try for uh, validating the, the soil moisture field, we drive the, uh, the EOF based on the CS EOF analysis. And uh, as you know, the, uh, the soil moisture is a very smooth field, which means that the first EOF uh, can cover most of the variability of the original soil moisture field. So in this case, uh, the same result is uh, derived. So let me, let me give you uh, this table. Uh, this table shows uh, the variance ratio explained by GCS EOF. As you can see in this case, the first COF represents most of the, the variability of the original soil moisture field. So in this case, comparison of the first, oops. The comparison of the, uh, the first CS EOF has its meaning, okay? And the, we check the, uh, the two statistics. One is the, uh, the pattern correlation. Another one is the uh, uh, normalized root mean square error. And it says that the, uh, the level uh, of uh, the similarity of two CSEOFs are quite high. And, uh, and RMSC value is also estimated very small uh, from 0 0.1 to 0 0.3. So based on this result, we assume that the simulation result is a bit reasonable. Okay. Okay. Up to this part is kind of modeling and the validation part. Now uh, let me show you some result. In, in fact, result uh, show result uh, is divided into two parts. One is the uh, some entire uh, North Korea and entire South Korea, and the other one is the. We select several river basins in North Korea and the South Korea. So. We are going to compare uh, these two cases. Also, the comparison was done with runoff ratio and evaporation ratio and the soil moisture. Okay. Okay. This is about the runoff. Well, and this is the precipitation uh, used as the input data. As you, you know that the runoff itself is very dependent on the amount of runoff. So. So based on this record that the precipitation record that there was no obvious trend okay, in the pre precipitation in South Korea and in North Korea. So they were, the trend were very similar. Also the variability is a bit higher in South Korea rather than in North Korea. Up to 1990s, they have a very stable okay, with the runoff ratio values. But after 1990s, in North Korea, okay, runoff ratio uh, becomes significantly increased. Even though we use different land use pattern in this part and in this part, but the increasing trend is the obvious in this case. On the other hand, in South Korea, we have still a very state values. Okay? So we use the same soil data, we use the same uh, land use data, but still in North Korea, they have this kind of different patterns. 
And this is about the soil moisture data. Quite interestingly, after, uh, since 1990s, okay, the soil moisture value in North Korea is also increased. Originally, we expected that the soil moisture level uh, will be decreased uh, during this period. But the result was totally opposite. Okay? So we are not sure why this kind of result was derived, but still, this is the result. On the other hand, uh, similar to the uh, Solanov case, the soil moisture level remains almost the same in South Korea. Okay? Uh, this is the average value over the uh, North Korea and over the South Korea. And this is about the evapor transpiration ratio. Okay? And we have totally opposite uh, trend uh, compared to the, uh, the line of ratio. Okay? Uh, the, uh, this part is the, uh, the, the, uh, represented for South Korea. So we assume that the evapor transpiration transpiration and this ratio is almost the same or maybe weak a decreasing trend in South Korea, but it has quite huge and strong a decreasing trend in North Korea. Okay. So, okay. okay, let me give you another example. Okay, this part explains how the uh, basin average runoff and soil moisture and the vapor transpiration. Okay, so we select uh, three river basins in South Korea and two river basins in North Korea. And this is the Soyanggang Basin and the Chungju Dam Basin and the Andong Dam Basin. So these are one of the top three river basins in Korea. And we select two river basins in North Korea. One is the Daedonggang Basin, another one is the Chongcheonggang Basin. Uh, you, you, you may know that the the Pyongyang, the capital city of North Korea, is within this uh, Daedonggang Basin. Okay? And we assume that this is quite apart from Pyongyang, so we uh, may be uh, categorized by the rural area. Okay, this is the result for those river basins in uh, South Korea and North Korea. And this is the result for South Korea. So almost the same in three liver basins. So no obvious difference between liver basins. But in North Korea, they have quite different the result. And this white dot represents the Daedonggang Basin. Okay. So we assume that in this liver basin, they, yeah, the area of forest, the forest area, have not decreased so much. Okay. But in the Changchenggang area, in the rural part, so there must be some a great uh, a change in forest area. So the difference between the two is so huge compared to uh, three basins in South Korea. Okay, and this kind of trend is also observed in the soil moisture field. Okay, in South Korea, the soil moisture data is very steady. And in three basins, uh, the values are almost the same. But in North Korea, uh, they have totally different. And the decoupling between the two can be observed since 1990s. And this is a vapor transpiration case. So we also have similar result in South Korea, and uh, totally a different result in North Korea. So. In fact, uh, this is the uh, simulation result uh, based on the parameters and based on the input data for parameter estimation. But still, we can, uh, we could notice that something quite a dramatic change has been occurred in North Korea compared to the South Korea. It's obvious because we use the same data in South Korea and North Korea. Okay. Okay. Let me. I summarized the research. And we did the hydrological cycle simulation in South Korea, and we found that uh, there is a huge difference now between South Korea and North Korea. And we assume that the change was definitely due to the change of the forest area and the
course, the area in North Korea is definitely related with the, uh, some, the economic collapse okay, since 1990s. Okay. So it's just 30 years period, but we can uh, find uh, that kind of huge difference in hydrological cycles between two countries. Okay. That's it. Thank you very much.